we're now live, you can go ahead. Thank you so much for joining us today. Before we get started, we'd like to begin with a brief message from Gilbert Martinez from our communications team for our Spanish speaking viewers. Gilbert. Buenas tardes y bienvenidos a la sesión informativa organizada por la Supervisora Hopkins y la Doctora Mace. Esta sesión informativa se está transmitiendo en vivo por nuestro canal de YouTube con interpretación al español. Para escuchar la versión en español, puede usar el link de YouTube que se encuentra en la página de Facebook del Condado de Sonoma. Gracias. Y ahora regresamos con la Supervisora Hopkins. Thank you so much, Gilbert. I'm Linda Hopkins, Supervisor for Sonoma County's 5th District and Chair of the Board of Supervisors. Welcome to our COVID-19 and vaccination news briefing for Monday, March 29th. We do have some good news to share with you today. We have now fully vaccinated 25% of Sonoma County's 16 and older population. That's more than 100,000 residents who are able to begin thinking about a return to normalcy without fear of the worst outcomes of the pandemic. At the same time, nearly 45% of our eligible population has received at least one dose. Because of our targeted strategy of prioritizing the oldest and most vulnerable residents, we have vaccinated with at least one dose, 70% of our 65 to 69 population, 80% of our 70 to 74 population, and 85% of our 75 and older population. And that effort to get shots into the arms of our oldest population including residents of all of our long-term care facilities has paid off. We have not had a single COVID case in a residential care facility in the past three weeks, which is a huge relief for so many seniors and all of the family members who love them and their friends. Now here's the challenging part. It's not all great news. The governor has said he will be opening up vaccine eligibility to everyone 50 and older starting on Thursday and to everyone 16 and older as of April 15th. Now, the problem is that our allocation of vaccines has been flat for almost eight weeks, and we see no evidence of this changing in the near future. In fact, Sonoma County's allocations are projected to decrease over the next three weeks. In addition to making this really challenging just to meet the increased demand for vaccinations from those 50 and over starting on Thursday, this will also make it much harder for us to meet our equity goals and vaccinate those communities hardest hit by the COVID pandemic. This is why we are appealing to state health officials to increase Sonoma County's allocation of vaccines. This weekend, the Board of Supervisors sent a letter to the state pointing out how we are looking at a potential 20% decrease in supply over the next few weeks and the challenges that this will present to our county in the days to come. We'll be discussing this more during the briefing, but in general, we really need to see our allocation increase so that we can maintain that momentum and support the many clinics that are doing amazing work here in our county and really see an equitable distribution of vaccines right here in our community. Now I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Supervisor Susan Gorin. Thank you, Chair Hopkins. And I really appreciate the information that you just presented. I am Susan Gorin. I represent the first district and I am delighted to be here with you this afternoon. One positive byproduct of our vaccination campaign is that we continue to see a decrease in our case numbers. Dr. Mace will explain more in a minute, but we are on course, on course to move into the orange tier very soon, meaning that we'll be able to open even more of our economy. That said, we're still seeing around 30 new virus cases each day in Sonoma County. So we know that it is still spreading in our community. As we move through the reopening tiers, we need to continue to remain vigilant. Moving to the orange tier doesn't mean that it's time to go back to life as usual and gather in large groups like they're doing in Miami Beach. In fact, many states are now experiencing a sudden spike in cases and health officials are attributing that to people dropping their guards and no longer following mitigation measures such as wearing masks and gathering in large groups. They also warn that it's a result of the new highly contagious COVID variants that are circulating around the nation and the world. At least 27 states saw cases rise by at least 10% compared to the previous week, according to the Johns Hopkins University. For us, even when we go into the orange tier, this still means that we are experiencing a moderate spread of the virus and we need to follow health protocols. 
So this means we must continue to wear face coverings, practice social distancing, and adhere to the capacity limits for businesses within the state's reopening guidelines. Despite our vaccination progress, we are still far from herd immunity. So we must reopen smartly and avoid moving backward until the pandemic is completely over. Now, Dr. Sundari Mace, our health officer, will go into more detail about our case numbers. Thank you, Dr. Mace. Thank you, Supervisor Gorn, and thank you, Chairwoman Hopkins. Um, let me update us on where we stand in the state's blueprint for a safer economy. We are still in the red tier, which means that we have substantial spread of the virus. The good news is that our numbers are continuing to drop. And as Super Gore, Supervisor Gorn noted, we could be in the orange tier if things continue this way for the next week. As of today, our adjusted case rate is 3.7 new cases per day per 100,000 residents. That's as low as it's been. This currently would put us in the orange tier if we stayed below four for another week. Our overall testing positivity is also at an uh, all-time low of 1.7%, and that's actually in the yellow or least restrictive tier. Our positivity rate in the lowest quartile of the Healthy Places Index is 2.3%, which is just on the cusp of the yellow tier. So all in all, we are doing quite well. Additionally, the state has now administered about 3.4 million vaccine doses to the most disadvantaged communities. This is significant because once we reach 4 million doses, which could happen in the next week, the state will ease the, ease the reopening requirements and we would immediately move into the orange tier. In other words, instead of the threshold being six new cases per day, uh, I'm sorry, four new cases per day per 100,000 to get into orange, it would be increased to six new cases per day per 100,000. And we've actually been under that now uh, for a couple of weeks. So like Supervisor Goring cautioned, we are preparing to move into the orange tier, but we wanna do this safely and carefully and avoid the kind of surges that other states and regions have experienced or are experiencing. In addition to wearing face coverings or masks and social distancing, we also need to continue getting tested so that can, we can see where the virus is spreading in our community and avoid outbreaks. We wanna make sure that we can find everybody who has COVID, even if asymptomatic, and ensure that they're isolated so they can't spread COVID to family members, friends, or the rest of the community. Therefore, we wanna remind everyone that same day testing appointments are available through OptumServe. Just go to www.lhi.care slash COVID testing or call 1-888-634-1123. Again, that is 1-888-634-1123. 1123. Go and get tested, do it for yourself, for your family, for the community, and we will hopefully be moving towards orange and staying there and moving even further into yellow here uh, as time goes on. Now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Irmala Shende, our vaccine chief, to share an update on the vaccination campaign. Thank you, Dr. Mace. As of today, we have administered 282,785 doses in Sonoma County, which includes 77,421 residents partially vaccinated and 105,752 residents or 25% of our 16 and older population who are now fully vaccinated. In all 45% of this population, um, those 16 and above have received at least one dose. So we're making great progress. While we celebrate these milestones, we're also preparing for the looming challenge of eligibility, opening up to everyone 50 and above on April 1st, which is Thursday, and everybody 16 and above on April 15th, while also dealing with the supply shortage. As the supervisors made clear in their letter to the state requesting more supply, Sonoma County's allocations have remained flat since February. Between our allocations for the county, as well as those sent to Sutter, Kaiser and Providence, we've been averaging about 15,000 doses per week over this time. 
The county has put significant efforts toward building an equitable vaccination program to keep pace with the announced increase in vaccination allocation. The county successfully increased vaccination capacity from 1,000 per week in early January to our current capacity of at least 40,000 per week. Unfortunately, our allocations have remained flat since February of about 7,000 to 8,000 per week for our first doses and a similar amount for our second doses, leading to a total of 15,000. So clearly we have much more capacity than we have supply. And as was mentioned earlier, to make matters worse, our allocations are projected to decrease over the next three weeks. I'll let Ken Tassif, our vaccines mission manager, go into more detail about that next. Sonoma County has been a strong state partner, successfully ramping up capacity to meet the state's announcements of increased allocations. Significant resources have been directed to expanding our capacity to equitably distribute vaccine. It's disappointing that this effort has been met with a decreasing supply of vaccines for our community. Ken will now share some slides to help visualize what our decreasing supply will look like unless the state is able to intervene to send us more doses. Ken, I'll hand this over to you. Thanks so much, Dr. Shendi, I appreciate it. I'm gonna share a couple of slides here and, and let, let me just start with a little bit of good news. Um, good news is that just total vaccines administered uh, to date as of uh, last night, at 286,000 uh, doses, almost 287. I expect we'll uh, eclipse 300,000 by, uh, by this time on Wednesday. Um, and that's a great milestone that we're uh, running towards. Um, but uh, many of you had seen this, uh, this chart here, at least the, uh, the vaccines administered chart. I took the liberty of adding our um, projected allocations uh, onto this, uh, including the other counties that are um, similarly sized. And you'll see here that, for example, uh, the week of um, 322, the, which was allocated last week, but received today, we, uh, we received about 12,890 doses, about 2.58% of our population. But I wanted to put that in perspective uh, with the percent to the population of other counties um, and how challenging it is for us to get doses. You can also see from week to week, next Monday, we expect uh, to receive approximately 11,220 doses. Um, and then uh, again, the week of four or five, uh, 10,900 and uh, 14 doses, uh, continuing to decrease over time. Um, and just as a, an average, I, I took the liberty of averaging out these numbers for those of you who like analysis. And um, our percentage to, uh, um, I should say, our per capita allocation is approximately 20% less than the average of our comp counties. Uh, and that's uh, week to week. So uh, it, it's really challenging to, uh, um, to uh, get doses out when you're not getting doses in. Uh, just as a comparison, though, I will share that the county or the state's allocation has gone from a million two down to about a million one, down to about a million projected for next week. So we do understand that um, it's not just us that's experiencing this, it is across the county or across all counties. Um, I'm going to share another slide, and we had we've been talking to uh, um, the state, our state partners, and asking for uh, for help in a couple of areas. Uh, one other slide is looking back our total allocations uh, that we've received uh, um, over the last several weeks, and I want to just show this blue line shows the uh, our first dose allocations. The orange line or brown line shows our second dose allocations. If you'll remember recently, we had a big spike in, in second doses that were required. And this, this um, yellow line, or uh, I'm sorry, orange line, re um, represents some of that, along with most of our, almost all of our blue line uh, went to uh, second doses. But as that dips, and as we get through that, these numbers continue to drop. And you can see overall, our, our allocations have, um, have remained um, substantially flat. Now, one last slide that I do want to share with you is one that I'm hoping that we can get some traction on. And that's uh, the, the uh, Johnson uh, vaccine, the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine that we're 
expecting to get. The state just recently got a surplus of Johnson & Johnson vaccines. And I took the liberty of going through um, all of the counties and looking at those that, again, are on our chart. And this was really disappointing to see, I'll be right up front, the, uh, that we, we were only allocated 400 of the Johnson uh, vaccine, whereas other counties similar size um, received substantially more. And uh, I pointed out to our county partner, or, I mean, our state partner, Partners, I'm sorry, that, uh, you know, we as a county are, um, have the highest per capita uh, homeless population of all the counties in the nation, uh, in our uh, COC, in our continuum of care. Uh, and uh, the Johnson vaccine is very helpful in addressing those issues where it's very difficult to get to individuals uh, a second time. This is one, uh, one way we can allocate. The other thing is that, and I'll share that slide one more time because uh, just to make a point. Uh, again, Remember that with the Janssen vaccine, it counts almost the same as two Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. So uh, our getting only 400 places us that much more at a disadvantage to comparable counties. We are very hopeful that the state has heard our, um, our pleas and uh, will respond accordingly and give us the uh, more vaccine. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to uh, Chair Hopkins. Thank you for the time to uh, uh, show those slides. Thank you so much, um, as always, Ken, for the excellent analysis and for sharing that data with the community. I really appreciate that. And thank you, Supervisor Gorin and Dr. Shende and Dr. Mace for sharing your words. Also, a thank you to Elizabeth, our ASL interpreter, and to Jordi, our Spanish interpreter. That will conclude the panel portion of our briefing today.